Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to um, a, another YouTube Live, another analog television. Um, I'm Paul Mackay, and with me today is Vincent Machetti, which I'm really excited about. Hi, everyone. About. <laughs> hey, Vincent, how are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. No, our pleasure. Whereabouts are you in the world? You have an Italian name, a French accent, and uh, <laughs> I know you've lived in England as well. And yeah, I lived in Ireland for a while, and uh, yeah, I travel a bit in Europe, live a bit everywhere, but now I'm based in the south of France, near Nice, in the yeah, French Riviera, like like you call it. <laughs> exactly, very glamorous. So it's pretty good living here, yeah. 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 I was tired, I, I live always in northern country, you know, when I, most, in most of my travels, so I need to go back to yeah, proper weather and good food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're saying about the Irish weather, but I'm offended for <laughs> half of Northern Europe. Um, no, it's lovely to have you. For people who don't know Vincent, um, he is the man behind a couple of uh, big film projects for the last few years. So um, he has a blog um, and he also has the brand Street Candy, which obviously does the film. One film so far, but yeah. hold that thought for later in the chat. More to come. <laughs> exactly. Some gorgeous merch as well. Um, so we'll get into all of this. And of course, we've also invited you because Street Candy was in the Wonder Box. Um, and yeah. it is the time when we judge January photos, and you were very kindly gone through lots of photos and picked some. Yeah, it was crackers. a great selection. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. So that is all to come. So what we'll do is we'll start with um, catching up with you, Vincent, about what you've been up to, what's on your plans, how your project's going, and then we'll we'll go on to the um, the judging the photos. So, yes. Yeah, sure. So I, um, I mean, we said this before we started. I've followed you for long enough that I remember back when your blog was called One Year With Film Only. Yeah, long time ago now, yeah. <laughs> More than one year ago and you're still shooting film. So what, what was the original concept of the blog and then, and then what happened? Well, the concept was, I said at the time, you know, I, want, I was looking for a new way to challenge myself, you know, as a photographer. And I never really shot film before, but it's been, you know, always in the corner of my mind. You know, I was always curious about people who were still shooting film, you know. And yeah, one year, one morning, I kind of decided to sell basically all my digital gear and switch permanently to film, you know. And I ne almost never shot a role before. <laughs> well, to be honest, the, f the first role I shot before, it was a friend that sh uh, borrowed me a, 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 a Olympus OM2, I think. Uh -huh. And yeah. he gave me a role of film and he said, okay, he gave me the role, the camera and just, just go try it some film, you know, because he was like a film shooter. So I said, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And uh, I went load the camera and basically it was a blank film because I didn't load it properly. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my first, first new experience, let's say, with uh, film photography. I, I shot uh, when I was young with those point and shoot and disposable camera, but never proper camera. So anyway, that didn't stop me because I was still, you know, really curious. And I remember I was uh, watching like videos of, uh, yeah, Mad, Mad Day. And uh, mm. it was mostly him at the time that inspired me with uh, film, film, film photography. And uh, so, yeah, from one morning I decided, okay, that's it. I'm doing that for one year at least. Uh, I won't take any uh, picture in digital because I was kind of tired with the process. And so I said, okay, let's do a challenge. And I said, and, uh, at the same time, why not add to the challenge, you know, to share my experience and my discoveries and what I'm learning along the way and if I'm liking or not. And anyway, there was so, so much to rediscover that I decided it would be interesting to share and maybe inspire other people. So I said, okay, I'm going to call the blog One Year With Film Only like this. I'm obliged to commit to it at least for one year. You know, it was a way also to force myself to, to go until the end. And, and the year passed so fast that I, I just felt like I, I started uh, scratching the surface of what was film photography, you know, in one year I, I learned so much, but also realized that I knew so little about film and all the process that exists and the camera as the film. So yeah, maybe like, now it's been four years that I'm still shooting <laughs> film, yeah. <laughs> well, this is it. So and the blog, remember, is, the... the blog is, on, is called On Film Only now, not One Year it's film only, With Film Only, of course. Exactly. I, I just shared it in the background on the screen share because this is it, I remember. Oh, sorry. I remember following that journey when you were like, I've gone all in yeah. on film. I love the fact that it started with an OM2 and a blank roll of film. Like, how many people's <laughs> first journeys are there? Um, and I remember you, it, as you're following along, getting to the end of the year, <laughs> and your post was like, uh, <laughs> so I've done it, but also I don't really want to stop. <laughs> but my exactly, website, yeah. my domain is like 
one year only. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and, what I, and I really you know sometimes I wanted to slap my face, my face for choosing that name. And it was like, yeah, I like the, it, the, the it, worst name I could pick because... <laughs> But it worked well. I think you're right. It worked well for the accountability and the yeah. one year with film. But then you said only, and then it's gone. But no, it's now <laughs> it's now on film only. And again, I'll, I'll yeah. just share it with people here. And on there, you have um, you obviously have some blog articles. You have some videos. You have the film dating app. Yeah, the film dating. That was because when I started film, I was looking for a way to to compare the looks of the film and pick a film that uh, I would like. You know, and it was difficult to find a place where you could find uh, for example uh, all color film together next not next to each other with like side by side but to have like a, a palette maybe of what the film looked like mm-hmm. and i thought about how how we could make a simple tool you know that uh, people would be able to discover a new film just not based on the, the content of the picture but more on the feel and the the look of the film and that's how i came up with the idea of the film dating so it was like a a bit like you would do on Tinder, you know, you pick a, a match, you know, and you, and then you're brought to another match and another one until you find your soulmate, you know, basically exactly. it was that. No, and I've, I've opened it in the background and also guys, for people who haven't seen this before, I've just dropped it in the comments as well. But you can have here, mm. and I love the start, the perfect film doesn't exist, the right one for you does. And this comes up time and time again when, um, yeah, when, when, again, I'm lucky to talk to film people every day as part of my job, but yeah, a lot of people come in and say, hey, I'm new to film. Um, or I've only ever shot HB5 before. What film would you recommend? And and I always start with what what photos would you like to take? Um, yeah. Because me saying I love Sinister, I love Street Candy is is only good if you want to shoot the photos that I do. Um, and this is brilliant. So people are saying yes, absolutely. So uh, <laughs> let's let's do a, let's try the live one. Let's see. Um, okay, I don't think the comments will work fast enough. Am I shooting oh, thirty five mil or one twenty? Um, I'm gonna shoot 35 mil. Do yep. I want to go color black and white or go wild? I I'm feeling crazy. Let's do. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you naughty boy. <laughs> exactly. So here we go. Ah, so this is it. So then select the five pictures you like the most. Okay, I like this one. I mean, the problem is this is where it, it's a bit harsh to do it like now because actually I want to spend a lot of time enjoying these. Um. <laughs> Okay, okay, I think I've selected, have I selected five? Isn't it, is that now five? Oh no, there's too many things on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go, next, next. Yeah, you should have another round now, I think. Oh, there's another round, okay, okay, yeah. I'll do it quickly, I'll do it quickly. So this isn't going to be the best answer ever because I'm now just sort of rushing through, but you, I want to show you guys what this looks like. Here we go, I've been recommended Yodica Atlas. Ah, oh, wonderful. Nice one. Yeah, exactly. And I think actually in fairness, as I was going through it, I realized I was clicking Yodica. And there we go. So then it throws you up a recommendation and you can then just go back and do it again. Um, and that's definitely something I've enjoyed doing before. Uh, <laughs> and I really like it. I think what you've done there is you've set up something that is uh, that addresses that, that point of let's not yeah. start with technical grain, sharpness, developing 1.3 at this time. Te- You're like... What does it look like? It's too early to talk about that, I think. Yeah. When you're your beginning, it's really more about the look that you're after, I think. And like you said, which kind of images you want to create. Yeah. No, definitely. It's something yeah. that I, um, I, I wish I had the technical ability to put on my own website. So I think it would help. But for now, I say, <laughs> go over there, do that, and then... Uh, then <laughs> Have a look come and back. come back to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hopefully come back. Hopefully come back. Exactly. Yeah. No, but this is important, right? Because um, people finding the film that they enjoy is much more important than finding a film that lots of other people enjoy because ultimately it's about you, yeah. right? Amazing. It was funny because with this, uh, I got so many people that came back to me, especially with the first version when I started uh, the first time on, on the, when it was still on film only. And so many people came to me and say, oh man, it works so well. You know, it was just, you know, in a few clicks and I got the, I just, you know, went for the picture that I like and it actually came up with a film that I, I was shooting or something because I even had variation. Like it could be, uh, for example, uh, Kodak Tri-X pushed to uh, uh, 1600, you oh, know, right. and some people will say, yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm doing. And they, they were like amazed with that. It gave, gave them that result. So I was pretty happy with myself, you know. <laughs> No, I, I, <laughs> I have to admit for this one because that is yeah, that is totally fair. It, it helps so many people. 
yeah. to find film that, yeah. I was really uh, amazed by the, the feedback and that he actually, you know, was picked up so well by the community and it's still used a lot today. So yeah, I'm glad well, I, can, I, I can see that it. idea on one day. I can see already Mike, Michael Oxley and Hannah Ball have already committed to going to <laughs> go look at it. <laughs> and I think that's a good point, actually, because the best predictive models should work on things that already happen. So if I go through it, I should be finding films that I like. Um, I also like doing it a few times in different moods because sometimes I'm in the mood for crazy and 35 mil. And... Yeah. Or different season also, depending on the year and what, uh... yeah, if you're looking for like darker mood, like winter or so, more so, urban so colors. <laughs> your, your, your dating app, you're going to update it every season, right? New photo. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> That's the next date. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it was already such a nightmare to bring it out. <laughs> I remember I think we, a bit about we, had, we talk, had a few talk yeah, about yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get it to change on like where you live. Like you say, I'm going on holiday. Yeah, but this stuff is great. <laughs> but no, I, I do really, I've always enjoyed that part of your site. I think it's, it's, it's bloody brilliant. Um, you did say before we started that uh, you feel a bit bad that some of the blogs, uh, you, you haven't necessarily given it all the love. Um, recently i guess it's hard to balance everything going on you have a small child as well now don't you yeah exactly i was uh, about to bring that up as well <laughs> <laughs> to, to give myself an excuse you know for not being the blog like, keeping the blog so active like it was before but yeah it's true i had to make some decisions you know it's been like uh, tough being a, a new dad i have to admit it's been a lot of changes and uh, we've also been moving uh, in, we bought our first uh, apartment so it's been a, a big change a lot of uh, home renovation, recently a kitchen as well. So oh, it's nice. been a lot oh, busy, going on. Okay. Yeah, a bit busy with the work and street candy is growing and growing. So it, it takes more and more time. So that's great as well. But yeah, balancing everything was complicated, you know, so I had to make some decisions and some cuts, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, it's true. I couldn't give enough time, uh, the time that I wanted on the blog, but I'm hoping to, to find new ideas and to, to keep that alive because it's such a great resources. There are so many uh, reviews and like the film dating tools that uh, are useful to people so it would be a waste to, to throw it away after all those efforts and no, those exactly. <laughs> and this is it like I, I actually ended up on it a couple of days ago was it a washi film maybe there was a specific film that someone was asking for my opinion about mm. and I said look this is it but I would like yeah. to again say you know I'm not an expert in everything so how do you how do you share other bits and, and I ended up sending them your article so there is great stuff on there and as you say like it'll be there it'll come back I'm told, yeah, I'm yeah. told that you do get time back. My daughter's a bit older <laughs> than your son. It's not happened yet, but I think it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> do you remember back when you had like a weekend to like choose what to do? Man, it's like phew. different world. <laughs> so much time now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, okay. Well, the I mean, the other reason that we can't be too mean to you about the fact you haven't been updating your <laughs> blog is because that's not the only <laughs> website or project that you do. Um, of course, you are also the man behind Street Candy. Oh no, I went straight to the the, the sneaky pre-order. We'll start here. Street Candy uh, eighty. Oh, already. <laughs> so, so the reason, well, one of the reasons uh, you're talking to us, yeah. apart from you're brilliant, um, is that the Street Candy ATM four hundred was in the Wonder Box, and um, I did a video last week, I think, or the week before, that you 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 added yeah. a few thoughts in as well. Um, and hopefully right now there's lots of people, maybe some of them on the chat who are shooting it for the first time or with a bit I more. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> um, and so I think, well, so I obviously covered a little bit about its origin story there. Um, but maybe if you could uh, tell us a little bit about how it happened, not just the film, but also why you, Vincent, you, you've, you've, you've got your blank roll through the OM2. You've decided that more than one year of film is probably best for everyone. At what point did you then say, I want my own brand of emulsion? Well, it started, um, the first idea I had in my mind, like a long time ago in the very beginning of, of uh, One Year with Film Only, is because I had branding, like you can see on the website, is with colors like that are pink and, uh, and blue. And I was discovering film uh, from Lomography, you know, like the Lomochrome turquoise, especially. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to recreate, uh, uh, not, to, not to recreate, but to create a film with those tones, pink and, and uh, with the dark blues and a bright uh, pink highlight. You know, that's what I had in mind. And then I talked to a few people around, you know, that were in the, the business, uh, in the film industry. And they told me, okay, man, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
just <laughs> it's never gonna happen <laughs> i said okay but then I, I met some people that told me yeah there is this batch of film that is unused uh, and they told me about the origin and how it was used in the past you know in surveillance cameras but mostly uh, in security surveillance camera it was not for traffic surveillance like uh, you can see with the, the, G, the gch street band this one is more it was more for sec uh, for yeah really security surveillance and they told me the story that the the film was used in atm's machine but i had no idea at the time that they were uh, building inside they were building camera film cameras inside atms you know so i found the, the story really funny and so we gave it a try and really liked the, the look of that film. So we said, okay, it's not going to be wasted. Let's, you know, put that film into into canisters and, and see how it goes. And so that's how I came up with Street Candy. But at first I thought it was like a one run because we were not even sure the film, we could still get fresh film, you know? Hmm. So it was really, uh, for me, it was really a one time, one time thing and it was it would just be gone after the first batch. It was in total, we had about 750 rolls from that first batch on the the film film base if you guys some of you may have shot that before oh yes it was really thin it was like you you felt like you could break the film at any moment when uh, if you would rewind or crank the film you, you would really want to pay attention but it was actually pretty strong i never broke any uh, any film in my cameras and uh, yeah then we we got lucky and we contacted the manufacturer of that film and yeah we figured out that it was still being produced and on a new film base which is like more common and easier to scan so it, it's like a standard 100 micron film base i think there are some films that are coated on 125 film base that's slightly thicker but i think it's pretty standard now so it's the same emulsion that we had on the atm, ATM machines but uh, yeah on a new on the new film base and fresh talk made uh, frequently basically no that's perfect i mean the um I, I went through there just a few of the sample photos people have put on on reviews mm. on the site and um it, it's funny because you look back at the very earliest ones and people talk about oh my god this was so curly it like attacked me in the dark room <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the, yeah, the, the photos were really cold sweat in the dark room as well yeah <laughs> exactly but the photos are beautiful so people were like you've got to weigh up how difficult it is versus how how good the quality is. Unfortunately, the thicker <laughs> base is good. Now, the other change that happened from the very start was the mm. canister. Um, yeah. And this has been something that a lot of people responded to very well. I remember even when we put it up as like breaking news on Instagram or something, the number of people who commented on this and said, look, this feels like a really good thing. So what, what prompted you to... To think about it what prompted you to put that in place because presumably that's more expensive and, and costly and time as well as money but than just doing what what everyone does yeah it's it's more expensive but well, i'll come back to that but uh, yeah what brought me to do to change the canister it was basically i was um, we're not making thousands of films every month you know but still i get a big batch of films to do every once in a while and i also receive on this i used to receive on the side the um, empty uh, big uh, huge boxes of empty plastic boxes you know mm. and i would i would put the boxes one by one and say man it's such a waste you know those boxes probably gonna end up you know thrown away and i, I felt bad you know about uh, be, being the responsible for you know mm. producing more plastic boxes and single use and i felt that and i thought that there's gonna be a way you know to to find a different type of packaging because we are we are doing it with a 120 it's in a sealed packaging you know but it doesn't come necessarily in a plastic box some some film does but other don't and i don't see the need to over protect a film like this unless you're going to a very very difficult climate you know in mm -hmm. a, a wet environment then you may want to to use a really sealed box but for most of us regular shooter we we buy the film we shoot it we don't let it age too well or, and I think, uh, yeah, paper-based boxes are more than enough for, for film, you know, and to protect it. And they are, they are tight as well. So th there's no reason that the film wouldn't age uh, as bad as it. Uh, well, there's also actually, a, ironically, I've seen it before where there's problems um, th th almost the other way, where if you are in a humid environment and you put your film into a light, into a perfectly tight plastic canister, it doesn't mm. help. It doesn't let it breathe. It doesn't let things evaporate and it naturalize. So... Um, having something that is a little bit breathable and allows a bit more of that, as long as you're not dropping it in a river. <laughs> yeah, that's not recommended. But, we but, still advise to keep it in a, in a store and yes, exactly. store it in a cooler no, 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 that's place. Film yeah. souping. That's film souping. It was deliberately film souped in a stream. Um, I think that's really smart. Um, 
uh, someone was saying this to me, uh, actually someone who, who works for us, who's a, a wonderful film photographer, she was she was packing a box that had street candy in and she was asking about it. Um, and we had exactly this conversation because they said, you know, she said, um, this, this, it's clever because while film photography, you know, the film is backed on plastic, you know, you can't get away from that. But if you keep your negatives there's no waste there from the plastic in the in the film itself yeah but the canister i mean i've probably got 10 in there for keeping batteries in but 10 is a fraction of the amount that i've shot so if you can remove that so yours is recyc- recyclable but also recycled is that right yeah exactly it's based on the yeah, recycled paper of course and it can also be recycled so put back into you know your recycled bin and you can also you put it in your compost if some of you have gardens at home you know the the inks we use are based on soy ink so it's natural uh, dye so there's no problem with that as well Does that you can even use it if you are growing small plants you know you can put some soil inside that's what I was, I was about to say I was literally like <laughs> so you can use it for seedlings and then just plant it yeah, in exactly yeah <laughs> there we go that's my weekend there activity we go. with my toddler there she will love that <laughs> Um, that's fantastic. Okay, I, I I love that idea. So you haven't though sat still. So there's a couple of things. There's one is um, I want to talk about the merch because that was the funny story. <laughs> Where here we go. Let me let me screen share it. Hopefully people have seen this. So here this um, the Rolling film uh, inspired by the Rolling Stones. Um, and the <laughs> funny story <laughs> was that in was it September. Vincent messaged me being like, hey, I've got this this new design. Would you be interested in like selling the sticker? I was in the middle of designing our next free <laughs> monthly sticker. I did some concept. <laughs> I sent him that hour one being like, oh, shit, like, this is exactly the same. <laughs> um, but Vincent was slightly further down the line. And I was like, well, I'll just sack mine off um, and we'll, we'll sell yours. <laughs> and, and they're brilliant. They, they sold really well over Christmas. I think they really make people laugh and they're really fun. <laughs> so uh is there plans for more different merch and and fun things like that yeah i have, I have um, some ideas in mind especially with the film club i've started uh, a new thing based on the yeah on the fight club i found really fun and funny the oh yes yeah, the, 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 <laughs> oh, there we go yes yes, yes because, I, <laughs> because i love the spirit of the fight club you know like the only rule about rule, club, rule so number one talk about it but yeah the film in photography is the complete opposite is the only rule I was about to say I was about to say <laughs> yeah, yeah. rule number one of film photography tell everybody <laughs> yeah. even if everyone exactly yeah about the film club yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool okay let's get on to the so yeah every, every once in a while I get an idea like that and uh, yeah I like to put it into uh, <laughs> oh no I love that I'm the same it's just it just made me laugh that we subliminally we were on the same wavelength <laughs> but yeah the... within like a week of each other and so uh then let's talk about the big one. So you uh-huh. teased this with me when I asked for some information about the ATM 400. So I've put this on our Instagram. You've got a bit more detail on now. So it's available for pre-order through your site. Um, we'll yeah. get some, I think, from your first batch at some point um, in, a, in a couple of months. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But um, what is, so this is MTN 100. So what's the, what's the story here? Well, the story is uh, after three years that I've been shooting, most of my black and white film has been shooting on ATM 400. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was looking, I thought about myself, yeah, it could be nice to try I shoot a new film now. <laughs> you know, I have a new film at home to try. <laughs> oh, so this is just for you. I mean, you're selling it. It's but just it's for like, myself. This is for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm selling it. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's really selfish. You know, it's just for me to have a new black and white film to try. No, it's because, uh, yeah, I thought, okay, it would be great to take a, a new challenge. Yeah, it's been three years that, uh, yeah, ATM 400 is, is doing well. And I thought it would be a, a great next step to try to add a new film to our catalog. So, yeah, it's based on the, um, it's made from the, the same manufacturer where we source our film was also known to make like a uh, motion picture film. So it was used before to shoot black and white movies. So it's a film that, you, yeah, you can process as positive if you want, like a, a black and white slide film. I just saw that, yeah. So it's, it's a bit of a tricky process if you really, well, you really need, have to want it, but it's possible. But uh, it's also your great emulsion to process as a black and white film. It has really a, a cinematic, I mean, a black and white uh, negative. And it has really a cinematic look and uh, yeah, it's a uh, fine, uh, 
there's fine details, uh, great contrast. You're gonna love it if you love like those old movies, you know, with really like contrasty uh, mm. images. And uh, yeah, I really can't wait to share the first samples. I don't have. It's been complicated yet to gather the first samples. So it's a film that exists. It's not a, a new, brand new emulsion that we're bringing to the market. I'm gonna be very honest about that. <laughs> so it's a film that we've seen before. We know uh, we know how it looks. We know how to process it. So I'll share more information when time comes because the film is still in the very early, early stage. Um, the first batch is being made, but uh, the new box is gonna take a bit longer for us to get this time. Uh, because of COVID, you know, like everything to, <laughs> mm-hmm. is to, uh, to blame on COVID right now. But yeah, it's going to take some time. But we are hoping to have the first roll sent in early April. Brilliant. Maybe late March, but I don't want to give false hopes. I prefer to play on the safe side and give you a better surprise if we can bring it up before. But uh, yeah, for now, we are, we are yeah, aiming for beginning of April. That's perfect. And I can see as well, it comes in the eco-friendly packaging as well. Yeah, there's an emotion you might know, but maybe you haven't shot before, and, and also in uh, in the beautiful, gorgeous branding. Okay, that is really exciting. So hopefully, April, um, and then it may. Yeah, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, <laughs> it, it may surprise us before. No, thank you so much, and thanks as well for um for for sharing that because it is earlier, I'm sure, than uh, than than maybe you'd like to, to to promise anyone. But as we say. Really excited for when it comes. I think that's going to be yeah, a lovely action. I can't wait to. But yeah, <laughs> we'll have the first sample soon. It's been really, yeah, finding uh, opportunities to shoot now has been complicated. I don't know about you, and but I like to do like street photography sometimes, you know, to carry my camera around. But I feel, you know, it's been a bit strange, you know, find inspiration and without people, without expression, it's kind of cold. I find it like cold photography and sometimes it's been difficult to gather, you know, new pictures and find new opportunities. What I don't camera, know about you. What camera are you holding there? Oh, right you, I thought you were holding a camera. Sorry, I thought no, you... it was my cup of tea. Sorry, but no. Oh. The other one I have, the oh. one I shoot the most lately is the... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, it's so my cup of tea too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, it's um, my M6, my trusty M6 TTL, yeah. <laughs> no one's jealous, it's fine. No, I think that's a really good point, and it's something that I'm aware of when we do the Wonderbox things each week. It's like, you know, what am I going to shoot? And there is variety. I think it's harder to find for sure. Uh, yeah. And, and I, re- I remember in, in the first confinement, I was thinking about like, oh, I'm going to challenge myself, you know, like find a uh, like daily challenge. And I even thought like shooting a roll a day, you know, of mundane things like in a perimeter of one kilometer or at home. Or, but then I was trying and I was like, oh, man, <laughs> just, just not coming, you know. So it, it's been tough because I was used to travel a lot mm-hmm. to explore new places. And that's also where I find my inspiration, you know. Uh, I'm not really into planning my pictures. I like when things happen naturally. So... Yeah. yeah, it's been difficult here. I know. I I do. I every time I send my films to the lab at the moment, I send like an apology note, being like, Duncan, <laughs> I'm like, Duncan, just to let you Sorry. know, you're gonna scan another like 200 photos of my daughter's face because <laughs> that's all I take photos of, apparently. Like <laughs> most of them blurry because she <laughs> she runs <laughs> moving. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, I it have is... those pictures as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's fair. I think at the same time. Um, yeah, exactly. Especially when it's dark, it's hard. But it's interesting because I mean, one of the things when um, this week's, oh sorry, next week's one is going to be Lomo Purple. I was doing the video yesterday, oh, nice. and I was chatting to Lomography about it again just to make sure like we we're, were weaving in anything that they wanted to or, or bring stuff up. And um, one of the people there said actually something that they've personally started using it more than their straight films is because their surroundings are so familiar. The same walk. They're like, I'm going to yeah. load up Lomo Purple because I know it's going to look different. I know the greens are going to look weird. It'll force me to see it differently. Um, yeah. And it maybe black and it's white It's a colour. great idea yeah, to read this. Yeah. Yeah, you can do the same, but it's, yeah. But I've, I've also, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because in my M6, uh, I've loaded a film from um, Yodika. Uh, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I, I had that role since a while and I said, man, I have to shoot it. And I said, the other day, I thought about the same, like, yeah, I'm going to rediscover like the my my surrounding with uh, like yeah. new colors and oh, yeah, it'll, it'll look different the, on yoga than it will on black and white <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> oh brilliant well actually sorry michael's just said a comment as well oh bless it's been so difficult getting into film photography so it sounds like michael's new to film just as we're not allowed to really go anywhere i'm itching to get out michael i hear your pain but the good oh, side man, i'm with you if you're enjoying film photography in lockdown it's going to blow your freaking mind <laughs> when you can go on holiday, when you can shoot ectochrome in the sun. Oh man. It's oh man. Yeah. Oh, stick with it, buddy. We're with you. Um, 
thank you so much, Vincent. That is absolutely brilliant. Um, guys, in the comments, if you, if you have any questions for Vincent, then um, just drop them there. We're going to move on to the judging now, but um, we'll, we'll be able to wrap up, I'm sure, with anything you have burning questions, either about the blog, the, the film dating, or, or the, the films ATM 400 or MTM 100, or just general questions. Yeah, just bring them over. General questions about uh, the south of France as well. You can be a travel agent. So, <laughs> Vincent, we said, okay, so these are submissions from the Wonderbox subscribers for January. So, w reminder of the rules. You can submit photos on any Wonderbox film. They don't have to be recent, especially if you're not getting to shoot much or developing. So, there's a wonderful range of films. There's definitely a, a bias towards more recent ones, which is lovely. That suggests that people are getting out and about. And um, as we've done before, I sent all of the ones that, that were entered in this round to Vincent and just said, you, should, you tell me five to six special mentions and uh, one grand winner. And he came back with seven to eight special mentions. And then I added several. Yeah, I couldn't. Eight. Yeah, shrinking down to the side. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a tough job, you know, because I wanted to pick more. But uh, Exactly. Yeah, so, to... so we Decision are, are going to show more. <laughs> Uh, unashamedly so because we really enjoyed it and actually that, to our point there's a lot of inspiration in that I'm certain that most of these photos were not taken on holiday at weddings like all the places these will all be done within walking distance to the person's house almost guaranteed so let's yeah, let's, let's, true, let's approach yeah. it that way let's approach let's all try and find yeah. inspiration from the next 20 minutes something we're going to try and replicate and um, Prizes as well, always prizes. So the grand winner will get a prize. We're going to do a lucky dip, which is a randomly selected entrant um, so to make sure that people are always winning regardless of uh, their experience with photography or anything. Um, you will both get a bundle of street candy goodies that Vincent and I haven't quite finalised what's in it, Some but nice, there will be a bundle. Yeah. <laughs> there will be film. There will be, there will be a good nice goodies. It yeah. will be fun. It will be fun. And also the grand winner will get one of the very first roles of MTN 100 when that comes. Um, March, April, we're not sure, but you'll get a voucher. You'll get a, uh, a, a one set aside and sent straight to when it arrives. So lots to play for. Right then, Vincent, you ready? Should we dive in? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Special yeah. mention. So hopefully we've worked it so that you know which photo I'm looking at. Let's find I hope out. so. <laughs> <laughs> so, we start Let's off... Let's see if we're in sync. Yeah. Yes, exactly. We start off with Peter Redford Jenkins and an absolutely yeah. gorgeous black and white photo. So what stands out for you here? Oh, it's like, for me, it's like a drawing. I love the definition. Everything is so sharp, precise, and the, 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 the tone of greys are, are just perfect. And I love the fact that there's also <clears throat> so, uh, some shadow details, and it's not completely blacked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the highlights are pretty well maintained. And I just love the ambience. Yeah, the castle on the back, the, the snow on the on the rooftop. It's just perfect. It reminds me uh, a bit of the Netherlands, you know, in some old villages, you know, in the winter. Ah, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it feels like it almost glows, especially with the tree where you have the snow and the branches even. Um, yeah. The, the film that Peter's used is, is Washi D., one of those actually with a very thin base that we've been. <laughs> yeah, I know this one as well. Yeah, I think I shot a roll of the Washi D. Yeah, <laughs> and and when when we said um, what does he enjoy about the photo, he's actually said the contrast is really good. Um, and I, I think for me that definitely. Oh yeah, the contrast. Out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think Washi D, if I'm correct, uh, but is is really difficult to to expose and to to renail the exposure. I think the exposure latitude is quite narrow on Washi D, or maybe maybe uh, confusing with another one, but. I no, it, it is. It is, and also, um, I mean, actually, there was a discussion when we were talking about the original batch of street candy, and um, people in the comments were talking about washi D. It's a real bugger for them yeah. as well, <laughs> and that is true. Um, but the thinness is partly what gives it, I think, that um, that real glow, and the contrast yeah. by itself isn't enough without a strong composition, and that's where I think this photo really, really works. So, well done, Peter. Yeah, really well done, Peter. Photo yeah. and <laughs> a great example of why tricky films to work with are worth sticking with. Oh, yeah, um, when you know, nail the exposure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Owen Hennessy, and this photo was called The Biker Gang. Which... Yeah, I, I loved it. It was really one of my top favorite. I really had a hard time deciding, but uh, I really love that picture. Like, yeah, four guys on the bike, like sunset, like everything is possible at this time. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Vincent, put you on the spot here. Which film do you think it is? 
So yeah, when uh, uh, because on the last I watched the last episode and you guys were guessing the film, so I so thought when I did the selection, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to guess the film. And from all the black and white films, I wasn't sure, but this one I say uh, this has to be Street Candy. Yes, and, uh, and I was right. Yeah, he knows he knows his baby. He knows yeah. his baby. <laughs> it's and the only one I was sure, and yeah, I was glad to, to see when you showed me earlier that I was right. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you shoot the same film for four years, that is a way yeah. of getting expert. <laughs> And yeah, it, it, it could have been a picture that I had taken. Yeah, it really reminded me the, the look of the when I was shooting with the, the Voigtlander and Nocton, the 35 mil, you know, the 1.4. Yeah, uh, it really reminded me that look. Yeah, something I could have taken. Well done. Yeah, it's a really nice picture. Beautiful. Um, and what Owen says is he says he loves the texture the film lends to the scene. Um, he, he was stopped by the fact that the, the riders all have a very uh, commanding presence, um, but are on, <laughs> on Boris bikes. Um, so it definitely enjoys it. His advice for Street Candy Shooters is that this film loves light and don't be afraid of high contrast scenes. Yeah, which I think it works is... really well in high contrast, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Really well done. Lovely photo. On to colour and Bogdan Sirland. I think this is one that I picked. I don't know whether it stuck out for you as well necessarily. I liked it too. Yeah, I, I really liked it too. But yeah, again, I'm sorry if I didn't pick it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I really enjoy your picture as well. But yeah, uh, I had to make decisions. But I, I really like it. It's really well done. The colors are, are really nice. And it reminds me that I, I, I have to learn again how to make those paper boards for my son because soon he's going to be <laughs> yeah. enjoying uh, those. So yeah, I'm going to get... Uh, Better get into my uh, origami practice soon. <laughs> <laughs> what I what I really love, what this stood out for me, I think, is it immediately felt uh, melancholy. With... Yeah, your connection with childhood memories directly, and yeah, and and also yeah, for that for sure. But also the um, I think sat in a, a dark lockdown. There's some sun, um, but the 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 winter autumnal leaves. It just feels very end of end of summer. End of holidays, and... maybe. Yeah. Um, and actually, so Bogdan uh, had titled it Summertime Sadness. So I think a brilliant example what? of uh, yeah, art in photography where you're, whether you're in, creating an emotion. Um, and I love, I love the colours. I mean, it's Portrait 400. So, <laughs> but not... Okay, I wasn't sure about this one, but yeah. Yeah. But it, I, it... I could have said Kodak Gold, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It, it's very warm, mm. so it definitely feels yeah. Kodak-y, but um, and obviously portraits traditionally used in more bright and more vibrant but actually i think the subtlety of the colors really really worked so um and again you're thinking you know in the in a world of thinking about inspiration around lockdown this is a a still life probably in the back garden um yeah you know it looks like it's in a bucket or something or just you know yeah like say in the back garden beautiful photo well louisa done. hawkins this took me a couple of times to notice the fox and then when I did, no way, I couldn't stop looking really? at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not very uh, perceptive, <laughs> but I, I was drawn to <laughs> the, the really strong oh, yes. shapes, the deliberately yeah. blurred, bright foreground, and mm. then you see the fox. <laughs> yeah, at least for me. <laughs> um, and this one surprised me. I thought this would be Washi D. It's got those very vibrant. Yeah, I lights. thought too. It's yeah. actually Cosmo Photo Mono. Really? Yeah. So oh, maybe with a filter or something? Because uh, I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, it's in snow. I wasn't snow. seeing Cosmo. It's in snow, so yeah, I, I don't know whether that um that's really pulled up the brightness in the foreground, but um, maybe yeah. Yeah, I mean that. I I love the image too. Yeah. Yeah, really strong. If I if I was being slightly critical, I think the 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 hair, the dust on the scan just before the fox, uh, <laughs> maybe I could do without. But there's so much about this photo that works brilliantly despite maybe not being technically perfect in the traditional sense um yeah and i i and... but I, I wish i would i would have seen the same picture but with the uh, the foreground in focus i would have liked to mm. see the fox in focus as well i don't know how it would have worked but yeah it's <laughs> too way to read it but <laughs> no again it's a great example of something that, that makes people think and talk yeah. and enjoy so really really lovely shot louisa thank you for submitting that and a great timing to catch the fox oh yeah because looking directly yeah <laughs> i've tried to, yeah. to shoot london foxes on film and never got anywhere close so really well, really well done cheryl cheryl chu um cheryl submitted a few there was one that i really loved from a yeah. humor point of view which was either her or a friend in front of a massive sign that said choo choo um that appealed to me just because of the name but uh no this yeah. is a really yeah, choo -choo. lovely one um She's called it British Library on a Good Hair Day. And again, it's a portrait 400. So what did you like about this one? 
Uh, for me, it was the color. I thought it was, uh, it was hectare because it's so vivid, the colors, but it's also the, the hour, I think, in the, the, mm. the end of the day that makes really this gold on the, on the bricks. And it really reminds me when I was living uh, in Cork in Ireland, there was a, a building with a clock like this. It was not as good looking as this one, but I was always tempted to take pictures of this building because it has a similar like chimney shape, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, you could only see that thing, you know, like being lit uh, with a with a low sun uh, sunset. So it really it reminded me like memories from yeah, my time in Ireland. Oh. So uh, I enjoyed it, and I recognized the the, the if I could say the yeah the British uh, Great British Britain Army, yeah. light, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. I mean, Cheryl says um, that. Uh, what can she say about this photo? It this is the centre of knowledge in Britain, and it's having a good hair day. The sun is helping bring it to life. Um, yeah, and the colours absolutely stunning. So, lovely, yeah, lovely work, Cheryl. And and that yellow foreground or warm foreground on a on a blue sky is always particularly striking. Just work it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Simone. And I think I put this one in specially because I kept kept coming back to it. So this was shot on Ilford XP2, which is actually one of the first um, films in the Wonder Box. The thing that I just couldn't get over was the blurred reflections. Yeah. So the boat shape is is built bigger um, because of the interaction with the water. So you sort of see if you saw the top half and said it was going to be a reflection, I think I'd have expected this really sharp mirror image yeah but actually it's like an abstraction of the top half if that makes sense um yeah i just it's like it really... two images into one you know it could have been for me like a, um, a diptych you know like two images put together that have nothing yes. to do you know but that have similar shape you know yeah so it took me a while to to read this picture as well but i really like the yeah the um, the mat, you know that uh, makes like a, a v you know in the bottom yes it's and the, the hole in the middle it, and but yeah, I wish I just wish I would have seen more the shape of the the boat itself, you know. <laughs> but I guess yeah, with the light it, it creates uh, yeah this effect. But yeah, really nice exposure. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think I look at this and and, and again, that it, so it could almost be a mixed media where the bottom half could almost be like a chalk, well not chalk, but some some kind of like painting or drawing of it. Yeah. Um, I just I find it really. I just kept coming back to this. I, I just love the almost symmetry um so really and, and i just noticed now there are like stars in the background that's really i think oh yeah. it's the spot maybe <laughs> not sure. oh yes in fact, or maybe top... they are the spots <laughs> maybe it's a mix of both yeah, maybe sure. maybe or top left shooting star <laughs> let's call it a shooting star definitely yeah beautiful definitely beautiful <laughs> well done simone yeah for the shooting star <laughs> and then liam barrett who i think i think has a couple so um the first yeah. one here is bristol lockdown um, so there we go. Uh, so this is presumably somewhere pretty I loved it. close. Yeah, it was one of the first images I saw, I think, from the series, and I directly loved it. I love the boat there. Like you can see that it's, it's been here for a while. You know, you can see the lines of um, mud. You know, and you, you can see the tide there. Mm. And it also reminds me a lot of the there is uh, the Riverly in Cork. You know, mm. and there's a long uh, sidewalk. So I used to take a lot of pictures there. And my beginning of uh, my early days as film photographer, and there were a lot of uh, houses like this and small bridges and stuff. So it really reminds me uh, like some good, good memories like the other picture. So mm. uh, yeah, I really like this one. <laughs> and the boat is perfectly placed, you know, because the there's like the the kind of hill on the back, you know, and it's really it, the the boat is perfectly like inside, so it really pops out. Yeah, well yeah. done, him. No, I think <laughs> it's, it's the fact that you can only read two words on the boat, one of which is the name, and the yeah, other one exactly. is the obscenity below it. I think that <laughs> that's very striking. I think the other thing that I really like is um, the, when you watch it, you you almost feel like there's probably another photo that you could take from this spot that's pointing over the river at those gorgeous houses with the bridge in the background, and it would be a very classy, beautiful photo and Liam has yeah. instead chosen to get down and muddy <laughs> get the camera low and superimpose this massive <laughs> muddy boat over <laughs> that beautiful image I think it's a lovely it's a lovely choice and I think the composition works really well I mean the yeah obviously it's a shame that the sky is, is definitely feels a little blown out perhaps um but uh well you have what you can on the day and and it's very well exposed throughout that foreground it's it's very striking. Yeah. It's a street photo in a way, while not being anywhere near an actual street. 
Well done, Liam. The nicely, I, yeah, yeah, nice ambient. I actually would see an X pan shot here, you know, because I'm seeing like maybe we could crop the top and maybe a bit the bottom would make ah, a nice yeah. pa panoramic with the boat here. <laughs> it's the kind of shot that works there. Exactly. Again, where probably a lot of panoramas have been taken on that river of the gorgeous buildings, <laughs> and this is going to be like and the, boat, yeah. the boat that's called Shadow Fuck. Um, <laughs> shadow. Oh, it's Shadow <laughs> So, Liam's... I don't want to know what happened in that boat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the it's the slightly cruder version of uh, Gandalf Shadow Facts. And um, <laughs> Liam's second one is a very different photo. Uh, a very again, children and animals are not easy to get in focus because of their movement. But here, Liam has absolutely, <laughs> absolutely nailed it. Um, he's called it Midnight Dog. I'd be amazed. That's incredible if it's taken at midnight. Um, <laughs> And this is actually on the FPP Let It Snow film. So I don't know how many people have managed oh. to turn that round already. It was one of the December films. Um, but this is really stunning, like the the shadow. Yeah, it's like it's taken... It, it reminds me a bit like those old... Uh, the, in the early days of, uh, of um, black and white movies, they used to uh, shoot... Uh, um, uh, night, light, uh, night scene, sorry. Mm -hmm. In plain daylight, they would just, you know, like... Uh, block the the highlights. They, so mm -hmm. basically, it's like for me like a a night scene that was sh shot in play, plain day. You know, oh. a bit with the the shadow and that's uh, what, what, what I, I, I no, feel I like, like it. When I, uh, that's yeah. that's that's going to be I what I remember about this photo, whether or not it's dog. true or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really good. I love the the slight movement. Again, the angle's great. So Liam is clearly a photographer who is happy to to play with the traditional angles and and it's really working. Aideen McFadden. Now, Aideen... Aideen, there were a few, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, she messaged me, um, I think, uh, maybe in reply to an email or on Instagram saying, um, oh, she just submitted for the first time, excited. Um, <laughs> she hopes that we like them. I was like, oh. I didn't want to say it at the time, but I was like, you, you've got three uh, <laughs> in there. So this isn't a triptych, as she's put it in. I've, I've chosen two here, and I'm, I'm sorry, Aideen, if this isn't how you want the photos necessarily to be seen, but I just find them absolutely captivating um and and yeah bear in mind as well now here's here's a trick for you which films do you think she's used it um i like to see maybe a like double film or mm -hmm. yeah it looks like double film to me maybe so one That's of them it. is double film the one on the left is double film the other two are okay. still 800t oh the middle one, I would have said, maybe the, the one on the right, I, I, I would have said Cine Steel, but the other one, I would, uh, yeah. I would have completely uh, skipped it. But it's beautiful anyway. So, exactly. So she's, again... It's he... amazing what you can do uh, with double exposure. It's something I really should play more with because I never really had a, a chance to play with that. Yeah. Well, the, the um, I, I really love what she's written as well. And, and I think I'm going to read something about this again. In terms of uh, lockdown inspiration... Um, one of them is called Lockdown, which is the one on the right. Mm -hmm. Winter Wonderland yeah. in the middle, and then Trapped Inside. So these are clearly being pulled from uh, the experience of being stuck. Um, in terms, that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, what's What's amazing is one of the questions I always ask is, um, "What advice would you have for other people?" And um, she's written for the one on the left. I don't have advice. I'm. This is my first role, and I'm not sure I got the best out of it. To which I would say, <laughs> if I ever take a photo that good on double okay. program, I will be ecstatic. So if this is you not getting the best out of it, I can't wait for your second roll. Um, <laughs> <You're good. laughs> and honestly, Aiden, you give me a bit of a headache in my selection because I wanted to take the three picture, you know, I just, I felt bad for the other participant, you know, to pick on me the same <laughs> one. It's incredible. And I really love them all, honestly, yeah. And then in terms of how she's managed it, so... Um, the let's have a look let's double get this right so the one on the right um really beautiful strong that double exposed with out of focus traffic lights mm. and the middle yeah. one is overexposed with out of focus led lights um so okay. so and and what she said again the one on the right uh she felt trapped in the house it's her front door but she's made something beautiful um and then the one in the middle it was the one walk. It was a dreary, grey, wintry, rainy day, and with a bit of out of focus LED and a silhouette that uh, has elevated that. So, yeah, 
I know this is in the well, category, but lockdown inspiration, uh, Aideen, these are really, uh, really beautiful. This is just the proof, yeah, you can find inspiration anywhere. Exactly. We, we, you just we have to, all to know where to go. Yeah. Feeling a yeah. bit. Uh, keep, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, like you said, can't wait for your second role. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Just wait for her second submissions. Yeah. Um, very different now. Luke Farmer. This photo just makes oh, me man, laugh. I loved it. <laughs> I, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's a, it's a true street photograph with humor, uh, with timing. There's a story. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the, 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 because the hour is perfect, you can see the, the angle of the shadow of the camera on the right. I love it. It's really pointing downwards where it should. It could be a bit, a tad bit down, but it's perfect anyway. And uh, yeah, the, the blur of the, the, the cab in front, it's just, you know, it's an place. I, I'm not usually a big, uh, big fan of uh, pictures of street art. You know that mm. someone else did it, but when it's uh, uh, there's a smart composition around it, you know, and it makes sense in, in the environment, I find it brilliant. So really nice uh, use, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree, and I think the um, what, there's clearly skill and uh, the composition yeah. here, and what <laughs> yeah, I think that's a police shot, car. Yeah. I think that's a police car. So you have. A police car looks police, like okay, yeah. it's hitting someone while being filmed on CCTV. I mean, there's a, an entire story in uh, in a small amount. Oh, that brings it to another level. I'm not even ready that, that far. You know, for me, it was go. a cab that was, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even better. Again, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be nitpicky and, and say I wish that that hair didn't come through on the police car. But <laughs> <laughs> this is clearly my bugbear of today. But it's, it's a really impressive uh street shot it's the kind of thing again that i could really i'd love to have a print of that um so uh, and also, oh, by yeah. the way luke Farmer, i would love to take those pictures <laughs> oh well also yes I'd, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have a print and pretend that it's my own um <laughs> <laughs> just leave it this year <laughs> the, luke, um, if you're listening and it's interesting as well luke farmer who um in fact i think we've got another special mention let's see if the next one uh, yeah another one here coming up we'll talk about in a second i've got used to seeing his name come up with um, when guest judges put forward special mentions he mentioned a couple yeah. of weeks ago to me that he started shooting film last year um which again made me immediately feel uh, uh inferior <laughs> <laughs> but he because again he was like oh I, I, you know i'm just trying things i just want to learn i'm like this is a this is a good start so what did you like here these three images the three people sorry yeah, I like the that there's absolutely no interaction between them. You know, they are all in their <laughs> environment, so you, you could take it. You could make make almost three picture of this. You know, I find it like yeah, a bit of representation of our our, our time, unfortunately. But I like the the dots in between them. You know, that kind of separates also the, on top of their heads. My OCD tells me that I would like a, a red dot. You know, on top of the the lady on the right as mm -hmm. well, so it would be perfectly aligned. But uh, and I love the the name also of the, of the picture. It. it I think when you look closer, you know, because uh, we can tell the name, it's uh, there's never going to be enough money. Oh, yes. If I remember, right? Yes, yes, yes. And so it, lo it looks like the guy is counting his money, you know, and they are queuing maybe <laughs> for food or something. And and at first, when I saw the picture, you know, in the in the in my finder, you know, the name was cropped, you know. So Oops. Uh, I read I, I read the name of the picture. There's never gonna be enough farmer, so because it cropped, you know, like <laughs> money. And you were like, so wow, that's I read the so picture. deep. The, <laughs> it's so deep, you know. And so like those guys are waiting, queuing to to shop groceries or whatever, you know. <laughs> I feel like there's not, not going to be enough food for everybody. And then I read the full name and say, okay, then I read like two different uh, pictures, you know, with a different title. So I, I found it was funny. But oh. yeah, like, it's a nice, uh, nice timing. I love the expression for me. The guy on the left yes. really kills it, you know, he's like, yeah. He's like, I'm so over this day. Um, yeah, yeah I know. you just and... want to go there and hug this guy. And just, yeah. <laughs> sorry for you. <laughs> and also, I think this will definitely be one of those photos that is... Um, We'll look back and, and we will recognize the year and the year it's taken because you have the little um, blue dots that here in the UK, uh, the, the yeah. social distancing thing. Um, Luke is actually here. He's, he's given us a wave. So hello, Luke. Welcome. Uh, we are busy reviewing your photos well done, again. Luke. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these, are, these are beautiful. And this was Sinistil 800. There's been a few. Shot during the day. It's actually quite grainy, which I'm not necessarily used to seeing on there. Sinistil. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, now that you say. Okay. Let's... Maybe the scan. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then keep moving on. Chris Patrick J with a beautiful uh, yeah. study of light. I think really nice. Say. Um, what, what attracted you here? 
Oh, I love the the wrinkles on the bed. You know, it's like the texture that it creates, and there's like so many things that could have happened. You know, in that bed, on that room, and I love the ambience. It's again very cinematic, and uh, yeah, with the the light between the shades and the exposure is, I think, just perfect. You know, mm. I think it's like a low ISO film because it, I don't see much grain even in the shadows. You know, it's well, it's actually um Rolly Retro 400s. So um, okay, 400. Yeah, okay. It, I mean it. It's a fine grained film. Um, it, I've never tried it, I have to admit. I never uh, shot many of the roller films, yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the uh, things Chris says that he really liked about it when he reviewed it is the, the fact that the bed sheets, um, because of the angle of the light, look like ripples of water, um, which I think is, is very well, it's true. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Works well, like that as well, yeah. So here we go. So Luke has stayed in his bedroom and found, um, and found a beautiful photo. And then the next one, Amanda is. Is square though, um, and this is the first one on Lomo Purple, um, and I think there is you, the reason I popped this one in is uh, I think it's a lovely, uh, lovely balanced um, landscape. I, I love the little sheep popping up white, but also in in terms of then looking forward to the Lomo Purple being shot more, um, people have asked yeah. what it looks like. You know, this is such a classic green to green to yeah this is what you can expect yeah from the low, normal yeah. purple yeah definitely a classic shot yeah. and i think what amanda's done really well is then use those the angle and the line of the the, the fence the lines the walls yeah. yeah to cut up a block of purple into something that is more interesting yeah. so beautiful right then there we go that well, well was done. all the special mentions so thank you so much vincent for helping us uh, do that hopefully everyone enjoyed that it's been a tough term. Yeah, it's definitely so enjoyed far. it. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, Aidens is definitely the one that is up there. I I love the idea of brainstorming double exposure. Uh, what's the right word? Like effects. So you have like your photo and then mm. the effect you layer on, like out of focus LED or traffic lights. I think that's. Yeah, adding a layer like you would on Photoshop, but you you think it on film, it's yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Oh, Amanda, Keep doing Amanda it, has joined us as well. Amanda, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for your special mention and well for done, being Amanda. the first to submit Lomo Purple. Um, really beautiful example of what the the color shifts can do. Okay, then let's head into the winner. So we've got Lucky Dip. So again, randomly selected from all the entrants, um, and then we'll do the grand prize. So Lucky Dip is. And it's Cheryl. So hang on a sec. I've got applause. I've got applause. Well done, Cheryl. Yay! Well done, Cheryl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's have a quick look as well at this photo. What have we got? It's called Sway, My Love, shot on Ilford XP2. Um, and she shot it at 800. Um, it's sweet okay. and fine-grained. And um, apparently she she loves doing that. <laughs> That's one of her things. Apparently is shooting <laughs> ISO 400 at 800. I wonder if she's going to do that to. Uh, That's how it is. Yeah. To your street to candy. Well. <laughs> yeah. So Many brilliant. So tried it. Yeah. I tried too. <laughs> yeah. So Cheryl, you will be getting a street candy bundle through fairly soon. Yeah. Watch out. Well for done, Cheryl. A message there. Oh, how do you feel? Here we go. Oh, Big moment. Last one. Grand prize winner. Excited to share this one. Here we go, and <laughs> it is Chris Lockyer. Chris Lockyer. In fact. Oh, yeah. There we go. There there we I like go. the sounds. Yeah. yeah. So, Vincent, uh, I didn't input into this. This was your sole choice out of everything you saw. What yeah. drew you to this photo? Well, I was instantly drew into the picture, you know, like, like the, just the picture popped up on my screen and I hadn't, haven't been gone through all the winners, but I knew that this one had the potential, you know, and uh, eventually I came back to it because uh, everything just worked there, you know, there's the foreground element, you have the leading lines, mm. the... Uh, the background element and the light is just perfect at uh, that light. It's like an early morning. There's a bit of mist, you know, uh, that glow that we we all like, maybe a, the Lake I glow, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's a wonderful image. And you just want to you know, like all the stories that have happened on that bench, all the people that came here and stared at that tree, you know, thinking about what happened. And in their life, and I don't know, it's like a picture that uh, I would like to, to have a print as well if you yes. know, if, Chris is listening. <laughs> Chris is. I, I Chris is here. We've just we've it. just seen him. So yeah. Chris, welcome. Thank you so much for this photo. So, um, I, I well done, Chris. I really love your picture. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I echo everything you've said. It really stands out. The the positioning, the the leading lines. There's no wonky horizons. There's no false perpendiculars. And then, the, the it almost looks like the tree is. Uh, I don't know. It's like you're watching a show where the tree is the main actor. Like you can sit there and because it's so much. Yeah. Uh, and, 
darker and delineated than all the trees. It like it, it and it's perfectly positioned. You, you do it feel like stands out perfectly. Watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you'd have a conversation with it. So and and Chris, if I have a request or a suggestion, maybe it's like to take. I would see like a, a fourth season of this picture. You know, like come back to the same place. You know. Ah. And, yeah. In a four season, and I would put them together, or maybe I don't know, but it's something I would like to see because I'm sure you can tell different stories at different time of the year. I think it would work great if this is in your perimeter and you have opportunity to get back there. Yeah, definitely. Maybe in color, or what? I don't know. It's up to you, man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, great. Definitely a great. Uh, if I had that spot nearby my place, I would be taking thousands of pictures, you know, with yeah. the same composition but different angle camera and you know. all. I, I think that's yeah, a, I think that's need play around with this. I think that's a lovely, lovely point because I think the um, it, you're right. I'm sure Chris walks well. Hopefully, it's close by so he can go back to it. But it's something that mm. he'll walk past lots. And and again, in terms of inspiration for lockdown, I'm sure there are those points on the walks that we all do that mm. other people would stop and go, "Wow, that's amazing!" Because we've seen them so many times. Maybe or we've never quite lined up the lens with the film with the uh, view, um, or been at the right time of day. Um, because this is a yeah. perfect example of everything coming together. I, I love your idea. I think. Oh, there we go. Chris is saying it's about a mile from home. All right, Chris, get your uh, get your get boots back on. <laughs> because I think you're right. Like, if you can, same focal length, same position. Yeah. Across. Maybe the... same film and yeah, different uh, time. I mean, of the day. trick will be to, yeah. to how to pull that tree out because I think the mist here has definitely helped. But we'll leave. We'll leave that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's We're, up to you. It's a, it's a critique. We're not here to, yeah. to help. Um, no, really well done, Chris. So you have, again, you will yeah. have a bundle of street candy goodies and then you will also get first dibs then, on, a, on a roll yeah. of MTN um, sent directly to you as soon as it comes uh, in a few months. And Tom, uh, and you're accountable huh? because uh, you said big new conversation that you would be, it would be the first thing once you receive the film from me that you, it would be the first role you bring out. First roll, first roll. So <laughs> we, we, when we get yeah. the bundle from Vincent, Chris, yours will be Chris, <laughs> yeah. sent away. First, um, and then we'll work it out. So, um, brilliant. So, thank you so much. So, well done, Paul. Yeah. So, well done again to to Chris and to Cheryl as winners, but also everyone who who submitted. Again, I say this every month, and it's true. I stretched the rules massively versus when we started, as to how many special mentions we do. I hope people enjoy going through um, sort of this variety. But the fact that all those different definitely, films, yeah. The fact that people spend their time on the, the comments and helping, I, I really hope we're all learning more. Um, I definitely feel like I I step away from any of these sessions knowing more about the film and the <laughs> Wonder Boxes, which is which is wonderful. Um, I also hope we've had some lockdown inspiration. So Vincent, uh, you're all about the accountability of the you know website names and things. What is the one photo, lockdown style photo, you're going to take in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I'm in the mood for snow picture, but I'm still waiting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you'll be like we I keep tried, checking I tried I tried well but if there I is no trying. snow you will have to you will have to take a snow photo without snow that's your challenge challenge okay I'll try to do this little cotton like that, yeah. or, uh, or ice, ice yeah like, you'll find you'll find something ice pack yeah I'll find something no but yeah I've been thinking uh, there's something I want something a bit with like that tree you know like uh, all the something very minimalist you know with the, f the floor covered in snow and but uh, unfortunately I've been in the south of France you know it's always good weather and warm mm. so <laughs> sometimes we get like snow alert but it never comes up here well maybe 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 then that's the the, the thing that we can all you know we don't have to obviously everyone's up to them but having that mentality of let's try and find the most photogenic thing on our daily walk um let's find yeah. that one the tree with the bench or the the fence or the building or the and and see if we can that view yeah study it um that's a lovely idea okay then i'll stop giving ourselves more jobs because there's more things to do than we need yeah anyway. we have enough on our plate <laughs> exactly exactly but listen Vincent, thank you so much i'm just going to quickly check i definitely saw a question quite yeah. early on um uh from michael that was about do you have any plans for street candy 120 or any other formats yeah i get that question a lot and i would love to do it and i think if it go, everything goes well with the new mtn 1000 uh, 100 sorry uh we're gonna have the funds to to make a batch of ATM 400 and 120, but it takes a lot of resources. It's a big order, bigger than everything we've done before. <laughs> so I know there is demand because we get uh, that question every once in a while. But there's also uh, maybe you could uh, help me on that. Uh, 
but I'm sure you sell more 35 millimeter film than 120 as well. There's maybe less use we for do, 120, it's, so it's, it's a bigger risk. No, it is. But Cosmophoto, for example, is another one where um, 35 mil existed for several years and the 120 also does do well. Um, but yeah, we'll catch up. We can catch up on numbers after, so I can definitely help with that. But I think for everyone here, so if we buy MTN 100, it's more likely you'll be able to do 120. That's what I'm taking out from this. So, yeah. <laughs> The and maybe have... MTN 100 in 120 as well. Mm. No, that's possible. Also, it's just a question of funds. If yeah. I wind that out, I think what you're doing is is really wonderful and bringing things like the eco friendly packaging um, is is such a wonderful moment to be in an industry that still feels like looking forward, despite the great history, despite everything we know. Um, yeah, that is wonderful. So no, thank you for everything you're doing, all the ideas, all the all the energy you have, yeah. despite <laughs> the young son and everything else. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, it's we've um we've gone past the hour, so we will wrap it up. Was there anything you wanted to talk about, Vincent, or anything you wanted to say that we haven't covered? I think we yeah, we said it all. I think yeah, Paul. <laughs> no, sure. So, so in terms no, of think, yeah. where you'd like thanks to everyone go, for watching. Really appreciate. So definitely, um, uh, you know, purchase the MTN 100 and support him when he comes out. Is there any Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, anything you'd like people to go and follow you on? Well, right now I'm mostly active on Street Candy Film. Um, I'm not giving away, uh, getting away from on film only. I'm also uh, uh, coming to say hi from time to time back there. So yeah, if you want to come, uh, I, I'm always, you know, keeping an eye around, even if I'm not so active. So, and yeah, definitely, if you still want to pre-order the film, yeah, there's still a few left from the first batch because most of it is already pre-sold. I'm quite amazed by that. So thanks to everyone who placed a pre-order already. And there will be some left for Along mm-hmm. Wonderland for sure. So good. I was waiting <laughs> when it that, comes out. Uh, yeah. That agreement we had. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. That's absolutely fine. And um, that's fantastic because I think the, it, it um, you know, we, we did, we just put it on Instagram just as a little almost teaser and immediately the response teaser, yeah. was really strong so i think that's really good i'm just going to quickly pop up your um your instagram as well so this is what we're saying so follow street candy film yeah. um, street candy film yeah street candy film <laughs> even though i did notice you have like over thirty thousand followers on on film only and that's now like your secondary account <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh i have that other account you know it's got loads of people but you know, I I check every once in a while say hello <laughs> no that's fine that's wonderful listen thank you so so much um Thank you for, as I say, everything you do. Thank you so much for joining and, and judging. Guys who have been watching, uh, thanks for getting involved. All the submissions, loved, loved, loved the last couple of days going through them. Um, of course, the good news about a rolling photo competition is we're back out there into February before you know it. So next week, the uh, film focuses Lomo Purple. We'll keep going after that. Um, keep shooting, keep sharing, keep teaching each other and me um, about your escapades because all of us learning more about these films is what it's all about. Thank you so much. We will see you again very, very shortly. Thank Thank you, guys. Yeah, it was great. Bye-bye.